Well, it's a beautiful sunny day, the end of October, and uh, well, as usual, I've been thinking about things, reading a few books that, uh, you know, I read back in the early 70s and thought I understood, and in most cases, I only read about a third of the way through before my attention deficit began to, uh, what can I say? Uh, turn me to other more pertinent and current things that required my attention. So, yeah, here I am, 30 years later in paradise, with a three, at least three, uh, you know, death-like experiences to reinforce, for me anyway, as an individual, that life really is eternal. And that once we get that firmly through our heads, then we can begin to live our lives on this planet during these short lives that we enjoy, relatively short, um, full of experience on an instantaneous basis, of course. But, uh, you know, when you're approaching 80, you begin to realize how, how very quickly the time passes and how deficient our, our memories are, you know in terms of, um, well, even the most intense experiences that we thought we'd never forget. You know, there's no question about it that they, uh, they lose their, their poignancy, I guess. They certainly lose much of the intensity, in fact, practically all of the intensity that we engaged in in that period in our lives. Anyway, I'm, I'm currently trying to catch up again on Alan Watts, who was an old favorite of mine. And I'm trying to reread uh, Psychology East and West. And I'm not even certain how much of that book I bit off. But just the idea that there were clearly differences in the way that the sanity of the individual was expressed, uh, particularly in terms of, you know, a really deep understanding of the nature of Buddhism and Zen and all those groovy things as we used to call them. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs>